أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وولا قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد والفرقان الحميد بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الذي جعلكم خلائف الأرض ورفع بعضكم فوق بعض درجات ليبلوكم فيما آتاكم إن ربك سريع العقاب وإنه لغفور رحيم صدق الله العلي العظيم وقال النبي حبيبنا المصطفى صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى أهل بيته وأصحابه إن الله يحب إذا عمل أحدكم عملا أن يتقنه أو كما قال صدقت يا رسول الله إن الإيمة في الله most gracious most merciful all praise is due to our Creator, our Cherisher, our Nourisher and our Sustainer. We bear witness there is none worthy of worship but Allah. We bear witness we believe in all the Prophets. And we bear witness that Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam is the final of all the emissaries of Allah. Respected elders, ulama, hufal, teachers, learners, brothers and sisters, I greet you with the Islamic universal greeting of peace. May the peace, the mercy, and the blessings of Allah be upon each and every one here at this auspicious time of Jum'ah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The new year has begun, the academic new year. And as we concluded the last time I spoke, two weeks or three weeks ago, the ending and beginning of times, or cycles of times, evokes in us a sense of reflection. And for those who effectively reflect, this necessitates what we call muhasaba. And muhasaba, we said, implies introspection, critical self-evaluation, taking a personal inventory, self-inventory, honest self-analysis, and genuine self-appraisal. If we truly value our own progress, and as we know, among the primary objectives of many of our ibadat, as Allah makes reference, for example, to Siyam, is لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ In order to attain unto taqwa, Allah consciousness, and awareness of the consequence of our deeds to piety. This is a journey, a continuous journey. And therefore, we are the salikin, those who are on the path towards upliftment, moral purification, self-improvement, and moral elevation. It's always a path. No one says, I have now attained the level of taqwa. Prophets had the taqwa, of course. They had the highest level of taqwa, yet they too fasted, yet they too prayed, because it is constant process progressing towards the ultimate and towards the divine. So how weak we may be, or how strong we may be, how good we may be, or how bad we may be, we need to evaluate our own progress. For we are on a journey from birth to death, from Allah we come, and unto Allah is our return. The better our journey, the closer our journey, the more genuine and sincere our journey towards Allah. Never mind from where we are right now, but where we are going towards, inshallah, that will determine our success in the hereafter. So if we genuinely value our progress, then we recognize and realize that the art of self-criticism or muhasaba is essential. And also it's essential for us to learn from mistakes and gaining an improved perspective on our lives in a realistic manner. As each of us look back at the past year in 2016 and consciously ponder, and I said look at three critical areas. One, what were the successes we attained in last year? What really went well for you? What went well upon which you can build? 
The second is our shortcomings. What mistakes did we make? How are we going to fix it? And finally, examine what we have learned in the process from the successes and the mistakes. What experience have we acquired? What would we do differently now? What would we do differently now knowing the consequence of what we have done? This is an essential part of muhasaba. Knowing what you know now, what would you do otherwise? What should be done differently? And therefore we said, there are a few key points in this process of muhasaba. One is it requires honesty and sincerity. Because if you can't be honest, you can't make muhasaba. If you don't see any faults in yourself, you're not seeing anything at all. If you show no success, nothing positive, you are not looking properly. If you have nothing to be grateful for, you are ungrateful. If you think nothing went wrong, there's an error in your judgment. Honesty, sitq, and ikhlas, sincerity. And this ikhlas is the premise and the basis of all our activity, by the way. Even our prayer, our fasting, and our dedication to the divine. Secondly, is the notion of tawadu, of humility. Acknowledgement of our limitations, irrespective of how good we are, or how good we may think we are. We have limitations, that we are not perfect. And that should bring in us a degree of awareness that sometimes we are perhaps advanced in some things, but not in others. Humility, that we acknowledge our limitations. The third point is what I wish to elaborate upon towards the end, what we call taqeem and najah. In other words, appreciating our successes. Some people are so negative and focusing on mistakes that they never see the success. It happens very often in our homes. A child will get so many A's and do so many things well and once they don't do so well and the focus will be on that one time rather than taking that as an opportunity to learn how did you get here on this? How can we improve it? But instead of judging the success, we focus on that one failure because we don't appreciate success. At the same time, to be in acknowledgement of your shortcomings, to acknowledge the fact that you have made certain errors or shortcomings. And there must be an irada fit taghir. You must have the intention to want to change. You can't say, I know what's wrong, but I'm doing nothing about it. I shouldn't be smoking, it's bad for me for cancer, but you know what, I only smoke five a day. It cannot work like that. Acknowledging the wrong is one thing or the shortcoming and intention to genuinely do something about that. And then of course, a desire, a genuine desire, uh, not only intention to change, but a desire to improve. Now, when we come to the notion of al-i'tiraf bil and I wish to elaborate on those two for today. The acknowledgement of shortcomings, and the appreciating of success. Self-criticism, self-appraisal, self-evaluation, muhasaba, does not mean self-contempt. It doesn't mean self-contempt. Some people think, I'm very bad because of this one thing. We have to draw a careful balance between working at our self-improvement and feeling useless and worthless because of some shortcoming. I may not be good in tennis, but maybe I can write well. It doesn't mean I'm hopeless. I'm only hopeless in tennis, but I could improve. Some people say, and very often we do this, we judge an entire character. What I refer to sometimes, you know, when the mother or the father or the parent baths the baby, the water is dirty. Throw the water away. Don't throw the baby with the bath water. It's only the water that's dirty. The child is in the water, it's part of the dirt right now. The dirt may have emanated from the child. But once you wash the child, the water is dirty, the child is now clean. Very often we don't distinguish that for ourselves or for our children and for our dear ones. We throw out the baby with the bath water. Dirty water, throw the whole thing away. So self-criticism does not mean self-contempt. And we have to draw a careful balance between working at our self-improvement and feeling useless and worthless. No one is useless, no one is worthless. Allah says, I have honored the progeny of Adam. Every human being is special. 
If you cannot see it, Allah does. Remember, when we are making a criticism of ourselves, it is of a particular action and not of the whole. And if you make mistakes, no harm, because mistakes are very often essential, a essential part of learning and developing, but very important to learn from those mistakes. As the Rasul said, لا يلغه المؤمن من جحر واحد مرتين A believer is never bitten from the same hole twice. If something goes wrong the first time, you learn from it, you don't repeat it. So do not equate mistakes with failure. Mistakes makes us confront our limitations. And we all have limitations. Some of us are more obvious than others. And it's no right for us to judge other people because of their mistakes. Rather to encourage and improve them. Because there's so many faults in the best of us and so much goodness in the worst of us. There's so many faults in the best of us and so much good in the worst of us. It does not behove any of us to look down upon the rest of us. So therefore, mistakes makes us confront our limitations. It's meant to be humbling, not humiliating. To be humble in Islam is essential not to be humiliated. Some people confuse humility with humiliation. <clears throat> humility is to be humble. Humiliation is to feel worthless. And that is not Islamic. Mistakes are consequential. We did this, we chose this, that is why we got this result. But failure is an attitude. Mistakes don't make you a failure. Falling down doesn't make you a, a failure. Refusing to get up is an attitude. That makes you a failure. So if we learn from our experiences, there could be di positive dimensions even to setbacks. Because much of what we've learned in history, even in science, through experimentation, were often done after trial and error. Even scientific knowledge is very often based on trial and error. But it's important for us to understand that sometimes there are things that we can choose in our lives. And sometimes there are difficulties and hardships we don't choose. Those we choose are a consequence of our choice. I do a bad investment, I lose money, I'm poor this year. I did something wrong, I lost my job, for example. Some things we have no choice over. But even in both circumstances, it's an attitude of positivity that makes you rise above the circumstance. I think it's very important. I don't want the parents to go home and tell their children, did you hear what the sheikh said? I want the parents also to have this attitude. Because together with your children, you can uh, elevate them and yourself. Never let the negativity of other people prevent you from being positive. Never let the negativity of other people prevent you from being positive. Be positive. It's the best thing to be. I always give the example of Rabbi Isa alayhi salam, when people were cursing him and he was uh, 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 praying for them and one of his companions said, Oh master, they curse you and you pray for them. He says, yes, they give what they have in their heart. I give what I have in mine. And always the question, what do you have to offer? What is in your heart? Never let the obstacles between you and your path rather prevent you from reaching your destination. Yusuf alayhi salam, Ahsan al-Qasas in the Quran, Allah says, was betrayed by his brothers, sold into slavery, went in through tremendous trials and tribulations, tremendous trials and tribulations, accusations, imprisonment, eventually reached a position of great honor, both politically and religiously. And despite the honorable things done to him by so-called honorable people, elevated himself above any story remains the most beautiful story in the Quran. The story of tremendous hardship, of people trying to humiliate him, trying to belittle him. The other point I want to come to is the third one about taqeem and najah, appreciating success. It's very important to appreciate our successes, not boast, appreciate. Just like acknowledging the mistakes and being humble doesn't imply worthlessness or hopelessness, or humiliation, so too, acknowledging your success is not arrogance. It's acknowledgement of success. We need to celebrate our success. We don't do this. 
They don't celebrate anything anymore. Everything has become bidah, by the way, so I don't know. But anyway, celebrating our successes. Otherwise, we are full of negativity. The news is full of negativity. The image of what we have is, we don't celebrate our community. We don't celebrate our successes. We celebrate organizations, institutions. We celebrate ourselves separately. It's rare that you find that Muslims are proud of Muslims as a whole. Last week, alhamdulillah, uh, my brother announced, there, I think Brother Ahmad announced about the results we achieved at Islamia. Alhamdulillah, other schools as well achieved great results. Many of the Muslim schools. Be proud as a community. The best result we achieved in 30 years or so, as Maulana said. It's a collective effort of people. and It's a community achievement, irrespective of Islamia or which other school it may be. Be proud. Yesterday I felt so good. Hashim Amla scored 100 in his 100th test. I felt so good. And the people are saying about him, his humility, that he's a character. They speak more about his character and his personality than they speak about his cricket. That's the best advert. That 100 of his, which is called yesterday, is valued more than a million khutbas today all over the world. Because when they look at him, they see a hero. With the beard, with everything. Sits down, he drinks the water, he does all the things, you know. Even to the details of what we consider the output sunnah. He does it. In public. He doesn't say anything. He never speaks about religion. Just being who he is, is such a good... People say that's the best. Even people wearing false beards there, which is normally seen as a negative thing because they are a uh, hash army. My point I'm making is, we don't seem to celebrate ourselves. I told somebody one day, mashallah, you know, last time he scored, say, yeah, but you know what the people selling liquor there, why is he playing cricket where they sell it? We're focusing on all the wrong things. He's not selling the liquor, it's on the ground, so but he shouldn't be playing there. So what do you celebrate? What do you want? What can you do? You know, playing in the masjid? We don't celebrate our successes. We find nothing to celebrate. And then when we come together joyously, it's haram or bidah. And then we get kitab upon kitab upon kitab upon these things. We don't have things to celebrate. We don't seem to want to celebrate. If we do, it's internal amongst ourselves. Be proud of Muslims. Imagine you go out from Juma and you hear something from another masjid. Someone said, oh, mashallah, you know what? We don't do this. Rather, we're skeptical. Oh, that means, sir. So we, we, we don't have that collective celebration. So, we need to learn. We, can, we must learn to acknowledge our successes and collectively celebrate our pursuance of excellence. Whether it be in the academic circle, whether it be in politics, whether it be in sports, acknowledge our successes. Collectively celebrate our pursuance of excellence so we can be proud of our community. Because if we are not delighted at our own achievements, who will be? Human beings have been privileged by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as ahsan taqween, as the best of creation. And singled out, فَضَّلْنَاهُمْ عَلَىٰ كَثِيرٍ مِّمَّنْ خَلَقْنَا تَفْضِيلًا Those upon whom Allah has conferred special favor, the human being, above and beyond all other creation. So knowing the potential of the human being, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to strive for excellence. In Allah ya'mur bil wal ihsan. We did every khutbah, we did it. And therefore the Rasul further added the famous hadith we quote often, Inna Allah katab al ihsan ala kulli shay. Allah has prescribed excellence or goodness in whatever you do. The notion of ihsan implies a positive intention positive intention in doing what is good and doing what is right coupled with the excellence in the performance of it the intention is good and pure the action is good and pure and of course you do what you do in the best possible manner because this makes us realize this notion of ihsan in islam that whatever is good is worth doing and whatever is worth doing is worth doing well if you are good in maths you excel in it, be the best you can be. Don't just pass. Be the best you can be. Why are you shortchanging yourself? If I can be the best soccer player, be the best I can be. Best artist, best reader of the Quran, best nasheed, whatever it may be. Be the best you can be. If you can be that, be the best you can be. Why be mediocre? Why shortchange your own self? 
You are the only you that there is in the world. Why aren't you the best that you can be? Excellence is the reward of labor and of toil, of striving for betterment, reflecting upon where we are and where we could be. So let each day be better, each day be better than your day before, and let every trademark be a trademark of excellence. You see, the real notion of Ihsan is not to be better than other people. The real notion of Ihsan is not to be better than other people. The real contest is striving for excellence is within and between yourself from where you are to where you could be. What you are doing and what you are capable of doing. What you achieve and what you are able to achieve. The quest for excellence at the same time is not a quest for perfection. Only Allah is perfect. Because every time you try to be perfect, you will fall short and you will be disappointed. Excellence can be attained by man. Perfection is the domain of the divine. So do not be stuck at judging yourself or other people by where they are in life. Rather, help yourself and help others to be the best that you or they could be. This is the way of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He took people who were open enemies of the faith and he made them the best they could be. Some of them were great people. Some of them were very, very, very shady people. But when they came in the company of the Prophet, he elevated them to a level that they became models for others. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anh, said one thing, let it come down to us. He said, Arba'un min al-khayr, al-farhatu bit-ta'ib, wal-istighfaru lil-mudhnib, wal-du'a'u lil-mu'rid, wa-i'anatu al-muhsin. Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anh said, Four are the signs of goodness. Four are the signs of goodness. Perchance implying, if you have this in you, it's a sign that you have good qualities, or four good qualities within you. Or, it's expression of the goodness of your humanness when you have these four things. What are they? Al-farha to be tied. Rejoice at those who are repenting. Don't look at the fault or whatever. They're repenting. They're repenting now. Allah forgives them. Why are you judging? Rejoice at the repentance of people. And if there are people who are deviating from guidance, pray for the guidance or for those who are sinful. Pray for those who are sinning. Make dua for those who have turned their back on the right way and now are turning towards the right way. Seek forgiveness for those who sin. And help those who are doing good. I repeat. Rejoice at the repentance of those who repent. Because they are repenting after sin. But rejoice at the repentance, not focusing on the sin. Pray for the guidance of one who has turned back to the right path after having been on the wrong path. Seek forgiveness for those who are still perhaps involved in sin. And help them out of it. And... Engage yourself with assisting those who are busy doing good. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that as the year begins for our students and for the work, people who are at work and parents, that we elevate ourselves and this be a year be of success. We also been announced that Sister Fawzia, Haja Fawzia Jacobs, the mother of one of the people involved in our sports here, coaching, Brother Fakhri Jacobs. Uh, Haja Fawzia was the wife of the late Yusuf Jacobs of Mafeking. They are from my area, I'm from Freiburg, we are neighbors, and many people from Afrikaan who are here, welcome. You must come past Freiburg to come here, by the way. So welcome, you make dua Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant, Hajja Fawziya, Maghfira and Jannah, and to all those who have passed on, Maghfira and Jannah, and those who are ill, may Allah grant them recovery, or whatever is best for them. Aqulu qawli hadha, astaghfirullah, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.